Libra. Everything is changing. What seeds do we put in the ground? What do you want? Freedom, that we know. Truth, sure. Honesty, that would be nice. People around you switching up, huh? Maybe you realize that a huge group of people around you had been switching up the whole time and you didn't even know it. Maybe you're just sick of everyone you're around and you realize you need some new friends. Whatever it is, whichever field you feel didn't give you the harvest that you wanted. You kind of knew that already by Virgo season. It's taken you a few more months just to get it together enough to make the changes. It's fine. Lots of cards. Good. Speaking right at once. Page of Wands, Nine of Swords. Communication becoming much more painful, but also it is clarifying because you're realizing that there were a lot of things um, in Sagittarius season that were revealed to you, whether it be within your own nature or uh, people you were dealing with, that has left things much clearer. Again, Fiery Page of Wands communication, Nine of Swords resulting from it, but the Temperance card there to be like, it was Sagittarius season and you needed to know that stuff. So, sorry. The Hermit and the Three of Wands. So this leading to a period of reassessing, like I said, since Virgo season, you've been thinking, you know, things aren't quite right. Like something doesn't feel right. And now you have the opportunity to Take that intuition, which you need to keep trusting throughout 2019. It will save you. Trust your intuition. Trust your alone time where you realize that you want to um, go do your own thing or you don't want to talk to this group of people anymore. Or you don't, you just don't feel it. Whatever it is, you just don't feel it anymore. Honor that. Ace of Cups in reverse and then the Star card. So and emptying out so you can fill back up by Aquarius season, you will feel a lot better and there will be such great prospects coming at you, perhaps already in terms of love. So that's the love way of looking at what's on the table so far. Now let's look at it in a different way. In terms of work, you may find that people are being a bit gossipy. I mentioned it in a couple of the readings last month, but in almost all the readings this month. Everyone is kind of talking about each other. This may lead to a lot of pain for you, um, especially if there is drinking involved. So be careful what you say, especially when you're drinking. You may also have found out, like I said, some stuff about yourself. There may have been a clarity in Sagittarius season of like, oh, okay, um, I need to fix that or I need to do something about that. And it was internal or something external was revealed to you where someone else's flaws or shortcomings were brought to light. Now, the way that you have dealt with that depends on the extremity of what you found out because temperance, again, it's very fluid. That <clears throat> spectrum is wide and it shifts constantly. It's fire. Um, it understands movement. It understands change. And so do you. Just like the scales, you know, the two cups, you've been doing this back and forth about, I feel this way, but am I right? Or I feel this way, but is it fair? Or I feel this way, but is it true? And so at the beginning, page of wands, nine of swords, you know, right out front, Capricorn season lays out the truth the way it is. Okay, this is what's true. And you have to deal with the realities of what that brings, whether that turns you into a nine of swords moment which no judgment, if that's how you're feeling, that is okay. Or if it takes you into a place of maybe devolving for a minute and self-medicating or drinking too much or eating too much, um, be careful because that's also a message here is the way you deal with whatever you're finding out is really, really important to your future success. Be measured and temperate in your drinking. Couldn't be clearer, actually. Don't drown your sorrows in alcohol specifically right now because you may end up saying stuff that will 
take a situation that is still somehow emotionally manageable for you and it will become out of your control. Now, again, if it's not love, if it's work, and you find that there is something about the people you work with that just makes them, you don't want to work with them anymore, or it's a group of people that for whatever reason you don't want to be around them anymore, this is the time to let it go. This is the time to, you know, do your own thing. And what does do your own thing mean for a Libra? You'll, you'll go and find another group of people that you like. You'll find other people pretty quickly. Um, but the emptying of the cup is important. And I think a lot of this is voluntary. I think by the time you get to the end of January, you're like, yeah, throw it out. Whatever's in there, I'm done with it. Just throw all of it out. So can it also be read as some sort of a cataclysmic moment? Well, it's still the Ace of Cups. Whatever is pouring out, it's only so an empty space can be made. And then here you have life path, you know, everything that uh, is associated with Aquarians. There is that higher mind and higher thinking and the better opportunities is what's implied. Now, if you're dealing with an Aquarian and they have really hurt you uh, and you feel like your cup has been poured out, um, they may come back around with some sort of an offer, but I think that you would be wise to refuse and to be brave and do your own thing. And that seems to be another theme for Capricorn season with the, with the different readings is this fool card. It just keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And it's basically, you know, you have the option always to be the fool and to be brave enough to let whatever cups you filled and investments you made to cut your losses and walk away that's also something only a fool is brave enough to do and so you are being asked here what ultimately is more important to you whatever you've put into those cups that aren't working that by the way are emptying out themselves or is it more important to you to follow your destiny and your life path and what is laid out for you and all the opportunity and the, you know, it's the star card, the success, the fame, the money. Um, is that is that where you need to be focusing? And what does it require for you to focus on that? Well, it requires that you have your eight of cups moment. It requires that you... <clears throat> If it's in terms of work, you realize that working for this company is no longer cutting it for me. If it's in terms of career, you realize maybe I need to take a different direction. If it's in terms of relationships, you realize this has not worked for a while, I have to go. Um, if it's in terms of your kids or your siblings, you may find that there are people around you who are getting into some pretty questionable relationships and there's nothing really you can do about it except feel bad for them. Again, this is a time for you to sow some seeds. So perhaps this can be a month of uh, prayer for you where you're manifesting and praying for the people around you to have the things that you know they need, that you're already thinking in your head all the time, oh, well, this person could really use this or that person could really use that. Uh, maybe use this month as you're sowing your own seeds to also do it for other people, knowing that it'll come back around to you, but obviously that's not why we're doing it. Okay, next two cards under the deck here, and then I'll have you look at these with me. Sorry, my shoulder's just bothering me a little. I know you can see me just balancing out the scales. Your energy really requires a symmetry that can be daunting. And sometimes I find my shoulders uh, unable to fill the task, but we will find our balance. Just requires a little stretch. So Six of Cups and the Chariot. Your love life will be okay. Stop worrying about it. Is there more? Is there love? Is my life destined to be alone? There is more. There is love. No, you are not destined to be alone. You are not. You can choose to be alone. Also not the worst fate in the world, by the way. But no, there is... Lots of love here, but there's also a lot of purging. There's also a lot of being honest. There's also a lot about what do you want to see next year at this time? How far do you have, how far do you want to have come in this time? 
Do you want to be in the same old circles? Do you want to be hanging out with the same five people? Do you want to be taking the same trips, driving the same way, dressing in the same colors? Although you're reaching this point of like, I want more from my life. And what is that going to require from me? And I think the most important card on the table is the Fool card. Actually, the combination of the Fool and the Eight of Cups. Because it is about work, it is about money, it is about love, it is about friendship. And it's about your idea of yourself and what you're allowed to have and how much you're allowed to be. Um, like I said, it's a tall order to find the Libra balance. So I'm sure for you, it is almost a crushing pressure, which is why I, don't, I think Libras don't like pressure at all because they're already under so much pressure. So the fool is about relieving pressure by doing what you really want to do. A lot of times what you really want to do comes with additional pressure for Libras because it's usually not what everybody else wants you to do and you're so keenly aware of what everyone else wants you to do and needs you to do that you just can't find the time, the space, the energy, the will, the guts to exert what you would like. The fool is saying you need to walk away from all of those things on that shelf and that, you know that like pattern of cups that you've made and you've stacked them a certain way and you see the symmetry of them and you see how much you've put into them and it all means so much to you and you've done so much and you've, you know, it's just not fair to walk away from it all. Well, fair to who? You know, and then the Six of Cups is here. Yeah, but there are kids involved. Okay, well, there are kids involved. Um, and what is it do you think that kids would rather see? Someone who is able to do this, cut their losses and have a good life, despite it, begin again. Stellar comebacks in any field are much more impressive than an actual success because comebacks mean that you had it, you lost it, and were able to do it again, so it couldn't have been dumb luck. Right? Or maybe it is. So what do you think they would rather be around? Anyone who would be affected by you making the decisions that you're having a hard time making. What is more appealing for them to be around? You get what I'm saying? But let's look at them together so you have even more of an idea of what I'm saying. Now, before we end on a bit of a serious note, this can be a very lonely time don't let it get to you. Not everyone, not nearly anyone, is as happy or together or picture perfect and Instagram filtered as they seem. Uh, but if you are feeling lonely and you feel like hanging out and you feel like having more of a support system and you feel like you don't have anyone at this time of year, you can always post on the Quietest Revolution community Instagram page. There's a bunch of people who will get back to you. We're very supportive, we're very loving. Uh, most of the Rev fam, as we call ourselves, have other channels that they've started their own tarot channels. They do readings, um, all sorts of readings that I don't do. So it's a really cool little hub of people. Um, well, it's not little, but it's a, it's a group of people that are very dedicated to their own growth and they realize that helping others <clears throat> in any way we can really um, aids in that process. So perhaps selfish, you know, uh, uh, desires, but nonetheless, the good that is done is obvious. As you can tell, if you leave a comment of like help or I'm not doing well or I just broke up with someone or this happened or that happened, you'll have all these people, you know, come to your aid and try to make you feel better and post things and tag you in things and all of a sudden you have this little running dialogue going on the page and um, in a time where disconnection, loneliness and suicide have become our top national, at least you know within the US, our top national killers, um, well that and opiate, opiate overdose, um, it, it 
is difficult not to notice that connection is what we need. And so connection is what you got, you know, uh, we're, we're very connected and we're always hanging out and we're always talking and Twitter's even more connected. Twitter RevFam is like super, super supportive. Um, and that's just at, at AmberCon. So, um, yeah, check us out, hang out, talk, you know, share, um, Maybe we can do a little bit to remind you uh, that you are not alone because you're not. You got us. Duh. All right, let's look at these cards. I love you, Libra. I would just like to point out that it froze when I was telling you I love you. So emo. Okay, bye. Hey, Libra. All right. You can see here that the news, the communication, the situations that are being communicated to you the clarity that Sag season brought you. It has not been the easiest. There is a call here for you to recenter and bring balance to the heart and mind. Your mind and your heart are pulling in two different directions right now. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I understand why. There's a part of you that supersedes anything that's happening now and thinks uh, there should be a solution. And there's another part of you that feels really emptied out and doesn't see how it could possibly be resolved. But then there's the star card and there's a pouring out here and there's a pouring out here, but look at the nature and the difference. Here you have an intentional pouring out and so for me what this looks like is whatever is being either violently replaced taken from you or replaced through revelation is only being undone because there is a new abundance with much more intentionality here something that ultimately makes you a lot happier then you started out when you thought things were the best. And that's hard to see right now, but I think it's hardest to see because you don't want to see it. And not wanting to see it can have a lot to do with fear and being afraid. <clears throat> there is something deeply, deeply, I don't know what's going on with me today. There is something deeply fearful to a Libran about the Eight of Cups. Uh, so much and how long it took to fill those cups and what it took, the amount of openness, vulnerability. How will I ever be able to leave this behind and have that kind of courage again? And yet you will. Probably much faster than you think as soon as you are truly, truly willing happily to say that whatever was invested here just because I'm walking away doesn't mean it's a loss. Just like it's indicated here that whatever is spilling out is not actually a loss. It is in fact a gain when looked at within the context of the larger arc of your life, your purpose, your path. This will ultimately, although right now feeling like a Nine of Swords moment, although you may feel like you need the Three of Cups energy or like you are surrounded by it, ultimately you will look back on this part of your life and say, wow, that's what really opened me up to my real path and direction. 
who would have known that it would take this as unrelated as it may seem to everything else, everything else being you <laughs> outside of this situation. And who would have known that that would have set me uh, on exactly the path that a Libra wants to be on, one full of purpose and love. Now, looking at these cards in terms of, excuse me, career, finance, friendships, Again, there is an indication of hurtful communication, painful revelation, perhaps indulging too much, needing to temper oneself, needing to come back into balance, finding out things about other people within that group, people who you thought were loyal to you. Could actually be specifically three people that you really thought were on your team and now you have to replace them with a new team. And, and that may feel really, really lonely. And especially to a Libra, you know, how could you do that to me? I'm the person who puts you on and connects you and is always there and does everything possible to do for the team. How could you not be a team for me? Whether it's your friends or at work or whatever, how could you not, you know, rep for me when I rep so hard for you? But again, with a little time and a little contemplation privately, you will begin to see the larger picture and your larger place, your larger journey. Because this is also a card of your path. <clears throat> that what you want most, that which puts you at the center of things in a positive way. But it has to do first with leaving what needs to be left behind. Um, and, and if your fear is that no one will ever come along to give you all those cups again, uh, well, there's six right there. <laughs> um, never say never. And whoever's got you thinking, like, whatever you're in is the best it's ever going to be, just take my word for it, that's pretty abusive. Whether you're doing it to yourself or somebody else is telling you that, that's a harmful, damaging rhetoric. And uh, who we are with <laughs> cannot be defined that way and should not be. And perhaps that is part of the larger lesson as well. That all being said, I think it's a time within Capricorn season for emotional maturity on the part of all of us and you are a cardinal sign who is extremely mature fair and yet can be swayed by the sadness in a way that can cloud your judgment and can make you fearful and afraid and immobile so there's a lot of movement here go do follow reach for and even this even the hermit is a doing now if you're dealing specifically with a virgo or in this case a sagittarius as well you're pretty clear on all this already and you've probably already thought through how you need to get out but it is at the end of the month that you truly start to see a life outside of it for those of you who have just come across a water sign, looks pretty good. For those of you who are pining for someone from your past who has heavy cancer placements, uh, you may want to try again. You may want to, but only if you are willing to make a new start of it. Everything good now requires you embodying this Eight of Cups energy and letting other people, oh, it has to be said, very important, letting other people embody it as well. So whoever is leaving, let them go. Now, in the extended, we'll shuffle and clarify, first of all, this situation, what is being communicated. <clears throat> 
obviously this. Obviously, what are the Sag and the Virgo doing? And then here. And then the Arcana here. All right? And that'll be on Vimeo, merch, tickets, the podcast links, everything else is on the website. That is your January reading, Libra. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2019. I love you. See you later.